Hello and welcome to the whiskey.com news on the 15th of uh, February 2021. And we have a number of very interesting news. The first news is a news update about a new distillery on the Isle of Isla. Elixir distilleries get their permit for building their new distillery on the outskirts of the town of Port Ellen or near the town of Port Ellen. That is what being said. Unfortunately, they're not giving us a name yet, so it is just the yeah, distillery from the Elixir distillers and yeah, nothing more. They will name the distillery's name in the future. Maybe they don't, they don't have even a name yet. They will decide it later. Then we have Mactala, Terra and Mara, two new Isla whiskies. Um, they're both yeah, single malt whiskies from Isla, Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskies, and they are closely tied to the name Morris, which is closely tied to a distillery on Isla, because um, yeah, that kind of gives you a hint where the spirit might come from, because there's pretty much just one distillery that has their name really, really tightly um, associated with the name Morris. Both uh, bottlings are in ex bourbon cast. Terra is filled with 46% uh, ABV and Mara with 58.2% ABV. They're not chillered, not chill filtered, and they are yeah, highly peated. So just as a whiskey from Isla should be. And then we have the Bruchladdich Isla Barley 2012. The barley was grown in 2011, malted and distilled in 2012, and it's a non-peated whiskey as the Bruchladi are. Oh, very, very smidges of peat in there because of the other brands that are being distilled there. Um, American um, white oak cask with 75% and French wine cask with 25% of yeah, storage volume. It comes with 50% alcohol by volume and yeah, sounds like really good whiskey from 2012. Then we have new uh, whiskies, Long Grow Red 10 years and Kilcarran 8 years uh, from 21, from cur the current year. Um, Long Grow Red has 52.5% ABV and the three year finish in red wine cask. The Kilcarran has a cask strength of 56.9% ABV and was uh, completely matured in first fill Oloroso sherry casks. They just came out recently in the United Kingdom, but due to complications with the Brexit and all that kind of stuff, they might be delayed in other European countries and um, will probably soon follow also in the United States. And then we have a really yeah, good news. The distillery number, the number of distilleries in the United Kingdom rose quite dramatically. It rose with more than 124%. And now the distilleries are on a record high of 563 distilleries in the United Kingdom. And that uh, breaks down to even more distillery, uh, um, more yeah, regions. We have new distilleries in Wales, England, Scotland. But it's incredible that uh, um, I would say more than a fifth of the distilleries just have been opened in the United Kingdom. So the distillery market in the United Kingdom, which Scotland is part of, um, is a vibrant and a live one. So they, uh, the demand and the supply is being met. So more demand and now they're building all the distilleries. And yes, we are reporting about the interesting ones from the Scotch side, because not all distilleries produce Scotch. Then we have a new distillery opening in the United States. In South Carolina, the uh, $13 million uh, investment called the Burnt Church Distillery is now soon being opened with 25,000 square meters of distillery ground. Two brothers fulfilled their dream and now um, they want to open it on the 5th of March. 
They have been building it for uh, nearly two years now. They started in May 2019 and now they are opening their doors and now they are distilling. Yeah, a dream coming true. So best of luck and we hope that you succeed within the whiskey business. Then we have um, a new yeah, legislation being proposed in the United States regarding, regarding whiskey. Yeah, the uh, representative uh, Chris May, I'm not quite sure if it's a state representative or it's somewhere in the capital, or I don't know. It's a representative and he suggested that there should be a new legislation for Indiana rye whiskey. Yes, uh, the whiskey should be from Indiana, should be made from 50% more than rye and should have uh, uh, at least two years of maturation. So it's a um, bit of a on top legislation because you already have rye whiskey. If you want to produce rye whiskey, then you have to have at least 51% rye in the whiskey. So all the other stuff that comes on top of that it comes from Indiana and has to have, have been matured for at least two years. Um, yeah, it's that what comes on top. And mm, probably I'm, I'm a bit against the two years because um, then it should be called Indiana straight rye whiskey what, what's what's what, what's the difference then between indiana rye whiskey and indiana straight rye whiskey so um, i think there's an, also a bit of a percentage wise if you have a straight whiskey but nonetheless sounds like a good legislation um heaven hill is um yeah bringing out the first barrel proof um bottling for 2021 it's the first batch of the Elijah Craig and the Larceny Barrel Proof Bourbon. Elijah Craig A121 is a 12 year old Elijah Craig and has 61.8% ABV. Larceny Barrel Proof is a 6 to 8 year old with 57.4% ABV. So good American whiskey is coming out. Then we go over to the international market. The Star Ward brings out a new whiskey with a red wine cask finish to the market. Yeah, it's this Australian brand Star Ward, which is kind of a, a rising star. <laughs> um, and now another red wine cask maturation. It is called Star Ward Left Field with 40% ABV. And now a little news in our own works. Yeah, there will be a new live tasting coming up on Friday at 8 p.m. Central European time. So if you want to um, join the live tasting, go to whiskey.com slash live. There is the event embedded there and you can click on it and see when it will be available in your time zone at what date. Yeah. That was it for the news for this week. Thank you very much. There might be a few hiccups uh, over the next month with the news. So mm, bear with me if I miss one or two weeks. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you next week.